So in, in San Miguel, one of the things that we have been coping with, actually a, a, an old friend of mine from New York City from 35 years ago, uh, turned out to be down there and she has been working uh, for a while kind of single-handedly with the migrants who come up from Central America and they are headed to Texas or Arizona and they're expecting that they're going to be able to cross the border. That's the plan. And most of them are riding on the tops of the trains and which is of course horrendous and very dangerous and people do fall off and wind up getting their legs amputated by the train tracks, you know, by the train going over them and all kinds of things. And by the time they show up where we are in central Mexico, they've been traveling a long time and they're exhausted. Some of them are with with wives and children. Some of them are just young men by themselves. Not too many young women by themselves, but some. Uh, and so my friend Tony has been single-handedly collecting everything she can collect. And uh, there, there are a few other people that do this too. And taking like a, a, a little, you know, kid-sized knapsack down with a little warming blanket and a couple of bottles of water and some tuna fish packets and, and uh, you know, maybe a warm cap if it was winter. It gets really cold up there in the mountains. And so these people were just riding loose on the top of the train and if you see pictures of it there's it's not just like there's three or four people on a boxcar there's like a hundred people on top of each boxcar and they're 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 determined to get north and uh, and then while while we've been in San Miguel the whole situation has also flipped they're still coming north at, at very intense rates they're despite everything that's going on with with people being sent back at the border and everything they're they're going it's and uh, but we're also now planning in San Miguel and it's also happening in Mexico City and some other places for a big influx of people coming back the other way because they're going to get booted out and so uh, the the um, the Unitarian Fellowship has set up a program to bring, to, to take back anyone who wants to come and stay in our city, either because they came from there or, in some cases, these are, these are folks who have spent their whole lives up in the States, basically, or most of it, and some of them don't speak Spanish. Uh, so San Miguel, because it's an expat population and has a lot of English-speaking services in it, w might be a good place for some, somebody like that to come and get a job because their English will be an asset to them for that. But uh, so we're trying to, to think about how to, how to go get them and how to do it safely for us and for them and figure out what they need and find them some housing and then I mean the long-term plan which sounds a little too grandiose is that they're going to stay there and we're going to help them find jobs and then we say to ourselves but wait a minute there's a lot of Mexicans who live here who don't have jobs either what do we you know is how fair is that and is that helpful actually but they are going to arrive so having a plan and a place and, and an office and a phone number they can call and things like that uh, will be helpful. They, some of these people um, will have to prove, well, they will have to prove that they're Mexicans, first of all. They'll have to prove that they're born in Mexico. And we understand that at the border, when they boot them out, uh, they take away papers and they take away cell phones and they take away, and, and so they may turn up on the other side of the border with really nothing. And so they have to somehow contact the state in which they were born to get their birth proof so that they can get on the national health insurance program. And then they'll have to somehow prove what their education level was in the state so that they can continue to go to school down here if that's what they want to do. It's remarkably complicated and we haven't really had a, the big influx yet but we're trying to be prepared because we really definitely expect it's coming. Some of them will come back probably having been field workers in the States and have basically uh, some Spanish, no English, and not be trained or ready to do anything other than agricultural work or something like that. But hopefully there will be places that we can do this.